You must understand and be able to tell us what the domain of a function is. The domain of a function is all of the values of x that you're allowed to plug in to the function. Two functions that you're familiar with are the line and the parabola. And what you'll remember from a line is that you can plug any number you want in for x. There's no number in here that you can't use. Negative 7 you can plug in, 0.1, a billion, doesn't matter. Anything you want, you can plug it in there. To say that we can plug in any number, what we say is that the domain of the function is all real numbers. Now this is the mathematician's way of saying all real numbers. X is an element of all real numbers. It is weird, but you're going to have to accept that this is just how we write x can be anything we want. And again, when, you're, when you have a parabola, x can be anything you want here. You can plug in negative 5, you can plug in a million, you can plug in negative 5.6, doesn't matter. You can plug in anything you want for x, so the domain is all real numbers. Now I'm trying to do some curly bracket thing here, as long as you make an effort it's going to be okay. Now what you'll notice is that in both of these you can use any number for x that you want. What I'd like to show you are a couple functions where that isn't the case. What do you know about 1 divided by x? Well you know you're not allowed to divide by 0. If x was 0 here you wouldn't be able to do it. That would be 1 divided by 0 and you can't divide by 0. We say that the domain here is x cannot be 0, x not equal to 0, but any other real number works. Again, can't be 0 because you're not allowed to divide by 0. Another common one that you may come across is the square root of x because you're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. x can't be negative here. What we say is that the domain is x as long as it's bigger or equal to 0. You can take the square root of 0, you can take the square root of any number bigger than 0, but anything that's less than 0 you're not allowed to do because you can't take the square root of a negative. As long as x is bigger than or equal to 0, any other real number works. And you'll notice we always have this xer at the end to show the rest of the real numbers work. Now you may be given a graph and have to identify the domain. Here is a circle that clearly along the x-axis goes from negative 1 all the way over to 3. The way that we write the domain of this function, since x can be anything from negative 1 all the way over to 3, is, be careful here, your minimum, negative 1, because that's the lowest x can go, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to, and then your maximum, 3. x is anything in between negative 1 and 3. You'll have to accept that this is the way that we write that. As long as this is satisfied, x can be any real number in that range. Notice we always end with this x e r. In this graph, x can be anything along the line, but there's an arrow pointing in either direction. That means this graph goes on forever in both directions. It goes to 10, 100, 1,000, a billion, 10 billion, doesn't matter how big you want x to be, the line continues on that far. Similarly, it can go as low as you need it, negatively. Negative 100, negative a million, goes on forever in both directions. There's nothing that x can't be here. And so the domain of this function is any real number that you want. You need arrows on either side for this to be your domain. And then a slightly trickier one. Here we only have an arrow pointing in the positive direction. It's going to the right. X 
isn't negative. Here's negative three, there's no graph there. Here's negative two, there's no graph there. Here's negative one, there's no graph there. Here's negative uh, 0 0.1, there's no graph there. As soon as we get to zero, the graph starts. So x is zero and anything bigger than zero. Let's try to convert that to math. X can be zero and anything bigger than zero. X is greater than or equal to zero. And as long as that's satisfied, it can be any real number. These are as tricky as the graphs will probably get for you. Be able to identify where a function starts and ends and be able to convert that into the mathematical domain of the function.